In studio, we're joined by Nadav Tamir, former Israeli diplomat, political officer uh, of, of the embassy, uh, Israeli embassy in the U.S. and consul general in Boston as well, significantly a signatory to the letter that we're discussing. So thank you, Nadav, for coming in as well. Uh, look, I want to come to you first, um, Nadav, to describe you know, your motivation for, for putting your name on this letter, for, for helping write this letter. Well, as people who dealt a lot with Israeli diplomacy, uh, especially in the U.S., we understand that uh, the special relations between U.S. and Israel are based on the common values of liberal democracies. And we think that the same support that we received from the American Congress all those years uh, could be best manifested in supporting the people who are demonstrating to save their democracy. And the trigger for this letter was the interviews that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was doing all over the media in the U.S. while not talking to the Israeli media um, and saying things that uh, we don't uh, think represent the true nature of what's going on. So we thought that the American uh, legislators should know what the truth is uh, from friends who uh, know the, many of them personally. Uh, Gilad, I don't want to bring you into this, obviously, here. Uh, look, do you have a problem with this approach, Gilad, to, to sending a letter to the U.S. Congress? I think uh, this is outrageous. I mean, uh, this is something that I, I see this letter as uh, slandering or trying to slander the Prime Minister, the, the legitimate uh, government of Israel that was uh, elected just eight months ago. I would just like to remind you to, to tell all your viewers that according to the letter that they have sent to Congress, they mentioned in the letter itself that the majority, what they call the majority, is a very slim majority, only of 0.6%. Now, that takes me back. I'm very, I'm disappointed and it even worries me. In any democracy, a majority is a majority. If it's slim or it's bigger than a slim majority, it's, it's a majority. What they're trying to sell to the Congress is not only do they not agree with the agenda of the government, but it's 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 a it's a government that has a very slim majority. Now that is absolutely it's an absolute lie. We're talking about the Israeli system, political system. Sixty-four mandates is not a slim majority. And I'm not talking about, as I said, this is an attempt of slandering Israel, its interests, and this is something that has never been done by diplomats. They know better than anyone else that there's a very important uh, of, of for, for the interest of Israel just by the, the what we call the Hasbara. And, uh, the, the, and, and what they've been doing with this letter is outrageous. Now, I'm going to bring it back into the doctor, Gilad, sorry, in the studio. But you know, it, as you agree in the letter, and, and Gilad points us out, that this is a legitimately elected government Absolutely. in Israel, uh, Absolutely. and it's acting lawfully, in fact, as well. So how can you cry to America, as many see it? No, uh, it is definitely um, a government that was elected fairly, uh, but it was not elected to sabotage the basics of Israel democracy. This has to be, be a process that is done by a large majority, like the Constitution of the U.S. You cannot just do it in a way uh, that, uh, and actually it happened on the same day that uh, Trump was indicted about trying to do something similar in the U.S., uh, which is to, say, to change the rules of the game. Um, we, it's true that it's not a, a regular thing uh, that was not done in the past, but it is not regular times. And we cannot treat this as business as usual when the Israel democracy is under attack. And in terms of Hasbara, I always thought that Hasbara, which translates to English as propaganda, is for not democratic countries. For democratic countries, what we really want to put out is the truth, not to sugarcoat it the way Netanyahu was trying to do. And we felt that because of our fellow diplomats who are now serving cannot do it, we have to do it for them. And that's why we made that uh, move. Gilad, I want, Gilad, I want to bring this back to you, but I want you to respond to this. this. What about, you know, the broad consensus promised by the Prime Minister? And also, what about this really sticky point about the Prime Minister speaking to all the U.S. news outlets, not taking a single hardball interview back here at home? First of all, talking about truth, I think uh, the Daven is uh, Friends can't handle the truth. I'm sorry to say so, because talk, calling us Barak propaganda, I think that's his uh, in, in interpretation. 
uh, and call and now reflecting your questions about uh, the uh, um, consensus. Well, I would like to uh, remind everyone that uh, the Likud, uh, Netanyahu himself, they talked about going to the negotiation table, waiting, sitting, the, uh, uh, sitting around the negotiation table, waiting for Lapid, Gantz, and all their others, and they just decided they're leaving the negotiation table. So if we talk about any anyone who's looking for consensus, we, we I think that Netanyahu understands better than all of them together how important that is, and that's why you also it's an it's an a halt for the time being until November. And regarding the the reason that uh, that Prime Minister Netanyahu is giving interviews. Uh, for uh, for American, uh, it's got a lot of attention uh, around here. Yeah, he, he's speaking a lot to U.S. media, but we don't see him doing the same here. Right, because once we see letters, just like we're talking about this letter that that slanders Israel in the United States, I think that the best uh, um, answer for that attempt is by Netanyahu, who knows uh, a little, I think, a little more than me and Nadav together about uh, Hasbara, not propaganda, truth, uh, and uh, and once we have, once we see such an outrageous attempt, for I think first in, 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 in Israeli history, of, of diplomats, dozens of diplomats sending a letter to the Congress trying to slander their own government, this is something that is, uh, it's absurd, it's, it's unbelievable. Nadab, Nadab, you're obviously aware of the unprecedented nature of this, and, and were these thoughts you know, that you wrestled with, were these issues that you wrestled with before penning this letter, before sending this letter, realizing that this is out of the box? Well, we are living in a period that everything is out of the box. We're not uh, living in, the, in regular days when we just don't agree with the government. And that is why the pilots, uh, many special units, the head of the startup nation, uh, doctors, all over, people are talking about uh, putting the truth out, and this is what diplomats are supposed to do in, as well. In, in Israel, we're talking about in Israel, that's, uh, that's 100% okay. In Israel, when you want to say your opinion, it's fine, but you, you and your friends decided that that's not enough. You slandering Israel overseas in the Congress. Oh, this is something that we no, we're not. We're not slandering Israel. We're actually showing the nice side of Israel when the Prime Minister is lying and trying to. He understands that the American administration does not believe him. He understands that the people in Israel does not believe him. So he's trying to speak the over the heads and is and is lying to the American public. And we had to straight the record, and that's why we came out with this letter. Your opinion. You don't believe him, that's fine. I do, and the vast majority of Israelis do believe him. So say No, that look the at the polls. Look at the polls, Gilad. The, vast, the, the majority of Israelis don't believe him. Look at he the polls. He was elected eight months ago. Was well, he elected or wasn't he not, elected? Not on the record, not he on the promise to sabotage Israeli democracy. He was elected no, he to govern. And important. what he's doing it's is important. not governing. He's not dealing with the economy. He's not dealing with the security situation. He's not dealing with anything except killing our own democracy. This is only politics. This is what your opinion, and I, I respect that. But I'm sorry to say it's got nothing to do with the truth and the facts. Look, uh, Gilal, I'll come back with you at this, that this wasn't a talking point on the campaign trail. Uh, not that I recall, and I followed the campaigns closely. So where did this come from suddenly, and why so urgently? No, 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 no. First of all, we have to... Speak. So uh, it's, it's, uh, thank you for asking that question, because uh, Defense Minister Gallant talked about it. Uh, Ohana, the head of the parliament, talked about it. Yariv Levin talked about it. This is something that was talked much, much before the election. Saying it wasn't is a blatant lie. That's, for, that's just for the facts. And now I understand. I also agree that this has to be, the reform has to be taken very, very cautiously, slowly. You think that's eight been done so far? Been, you think this has been the picture of caution months, so far? It took, eight months, it took eight months, eight months, eight long months, just to have one very mild, uh, 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 reasonable, reasonable uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, 
uh, uh, law that was that was uh, um, uh, um, that they they voted last week. Eight months. I think that's a long to, time to take a power away from the Supreme Court. Uh, yes, and, and there was and there was a, well, there was a lot of deliberation at that time. Uh, look, Nadav, to bring you back into this, so if you were representing this government now, you know what what would you be saying internationally? Would you be talking the same way? I mean, what, how do you represent the government's actions at this point? Well, first of all, I believe the diplomats represent not only the government, they represent the whole country and the whole society. And this is what I used to do as, well, as a diplomat. I would explain that this is the position of the government, but this is the position of people on the streets. And this is the position of the opposition. And this is where the Supreme Court is. And this is the way you should speak to audiences uh, when you represent a, democra a democracy. We're not North Korea, where you come with the talking points that was sent to you by someone and you just read it. The, the Nadab, job of the diplomats Nadab. is to describe the situation as it is, it does not to like sugarcoat it. Does it help or does it further plant the wedge you know, between the sides? Is we need sides to come together. We need consensus. Does a letter like this just further divide? No, we need, uh, we, we need the liberal democracies in the world to stand for each other. Uh, and why the Orbans and Putins and Trumps and Erdogans support this kind of moves, we expect the American members of Congress who are liberal Democrats to support the people in the streets who are trying to defend their democracy. This is what patriots should do. And all of the signers of this letter are patriot Zionists, while the people that sit in our government today, most of them would not sign the Declaration of Independence. It's the most anti-Zionist government we ever had.